Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. This is my forerunner. That's getting the 5.3 liter uh, LS Vortec whatever V8. And we're not ready for that yet. Today, I want to talk about not the toilets. <laughs> the toilet. Uh, <laughs> these are both from my 440. This is a thermal quad that I got at the junkyard, and that's the yellow brack that came on it. That actually appears to be in nice shape, and I should probably just use. Anyway, um, we did the LS basic wiring and firing last week. This is my C10, for those of you who don't know. Um, it's in a state of disarray, and there's no real excuse for it, so I'm not going to make any. But I got a lot of questions on the video about wiring and firing the LS, and I want to go through each one of those things in its own video. So one of the good questions I got, I've already started stacking crap all over this. That's helpful. Um, here's some acetone with a no lid on it. That'll be on the floor. I randomly won this hat at Napa. Like They were like, you're the millionth customer or something, and gave me that, and I thought it was a scam. Anyway, um... There's a ram. Someone asked about the fuel system, and that is a good question. So to cover the fuel system, we'll cover the two different types of rails that you'll encounter. I would recommend, this is PCV. I'm just going to move it out of the way here. So I would recommend, if you can, get a 99-03 engine, always, every time. 04 to 07 engines have Gen 4 rods and they're beefier and they can do a thousand horsepower, but these rods will be in here forever. And 99% of people are never going to make a thousand horsepower. Um, the reason that I recommend this is because it's the easiest to hook up in most applications. It has a cable throttle, so you can just get the right length cable and hook it to the pedal you already have. You don't have to, this truck's uh, drive by wire. Except I think I already took the pedal out. I did, because I hate it. Um, so, if you have a drive-by wire, like an 03 and up, then you're looking at uh, some kind of pedal like this. I think this is one is off a of Cadillac. I don't remember. But uh, then you gotta figure out a way to mount it, which I made a little bracket, 3D printed it, but it's just extra. It's extra and nobody likes it. And the other reason is the fuel rails. So this is what we call a return style system. The top line feeds in, pressurizes all this. This is a regulator. It is referenced to manifold. So this will do, I guarantee, 15 PSI. It, it'll work for it. All you have to do is hook your fuel lines up. This is a return. I run them dash six on both, and it works fine for me. I've never made more than 700 tire on an LS. I know that makes me lame, but I'm okay with it. Um, this is the simplest engine and configuration to hook up. You get a couple adapters. I'll link them below, and I'll show you over here on Daryl. Um, Russell makes them. Evil Energy makes them now. A couple other companies, but it's just that. Right there, that tightens over that bulb so you can run your lines, whatever they are. For the video, I had like a fuel pump in here and, and a hose clamp. I obviously don't recommend you doing that for real. Um, so it goes over here like this, pulls it back, tightens up. And then you can put your AN6 or your barb, whatever you want. Some people run the nylon. I just do AN6. Evil Energy hose works fine for me. Um, I'm going to put this back in before some crap gets in it. So, Gen 3, 99 to 03, like this. All you have to do is hook these two thing lines up. One feed, one return. I'll walk over here and show you guys the pump. I used to use Chemso pumps. And they're like an off-brand that you can get on Amazon and eBay. Um... I've got all this. This is this is my just needs a fuel pump kit. Uh, nowadays, I use the Evil Energy pump because these went up in price a little bit, and that's the only reason. Like that's all. 
This is supposed to be a 340 liter per hour pump. It's more than enough for an NA LS. It's more than enough for a basic turbo with like a set of deck of 80s and trying to make five, 600 horsepower. Um, that all works fine. And then there's, there's nothing extra you need to do. Like zip tie this bitch in your fuel pickup, run your line up to your rail and you're done. And that regulator will regulate everything for you. you put a filter in line, Shipbox Supply has them, Evil Energy has them, put it wherever it's clever. You don't have to do anything extra. So, what if you have an 04 to 07 engine? But JR, I have an 04 to 07 engine. I got a good deal on it. It was easier, it was cheaper, whatever. Well, for one, you can just put this rail on the newer engine and have the return style, and it's way easier. I've seen people do some weird shit over the years, like try to use a Corvette filter regulator and then like mount it up front and um, whatever. If you're using a factory PCM, you need to tell your tuner and you need to adjust in the tune that you don't have a rising rate regulator. Otherwise, what you can do is what I've done here for Daryl. Um, I'm trying to remember how I had this. It's been a little while. So Daryl has a dash six feed up to a shitbox supply filter, 10 micron filter. And then I have a flex field sensor in it. Then it runs over to a three port PQI regulator, which I don't know where it's at. I don't know why I don't see it. Oh, here it is. This is all discombobulated, like I said. So three port regulator, this is gonna be your out. This is going to be return to your tank. And this is gonna be your feed in. And then you just reference it to the manifold here so that it can reference your, and then you send it back. The reason that I tell you not to do that is you had to buy all these fittings and a little piece of hose and this regulator, it's only 30 bucks, but still like over there, I didn't have to do anything. So that's why I prefer that. Um, the other thing people ask about all the time is frame mounted pumps like what frame mounted pump can i use and i really don't recommend anybody use a frame mounted pump out man this thing's really dirty i need to clean this off this weekend i need to get it together anyway external pump don't recommend you'll have issues i guarantee it even if you're just na even if you're just you know having fun stock engine Every time you're below half a tank, every time you turn a corner, every time you climb a hill, you're going to have problems with an external pump because the fuel is going to run away from the pickup and it's going to starve. Do whatever you need to do to get a pump in the tank. And if you can't, like for that, I'm actually this the Forerunner had a side tank and I'm going to find something that fits in the back. With an EFI pump, I'm thinking like an S10 tank. Uh, people have used F-150 tanks but I'm thinking like to say GM to keep my fittings the same, but we'll see, we'll, we'll figure it out. I will use an in-tank pump in that. If you absolutely cannot, like you have some older than this C10 with the tank in the cab or an F100 or whatever, um, then you can get what's called a surge tank, which is basically like a reservoir. So you would low pressure pump up to like a half gallon tank. For me, it could sit right here. Uh, and then high pressure out of that and then it won't run out and that's what you do. So Injectors, I'll cover that real quick um, Again for For headers cam NA, like I just use stock injectors. I really Don't bother If you're gonna pay full price at the junkyard like don't bother upgrade or full price from somebody on eBay or something Don't bother upgrading like it's not worth the 200 bucks even for what they charge at yards nowadays, it's almost not worth the price. So they're like, some yards want 20, 30 bucks an injector. So again, you're like right back to 150, 200 bucks. Um, so I don't really recommend people, most people mess with their injectors. If you just have to have boost, um, DECA 80s, decaps, uh, I forget who snake eater that's where these these are snake eater injectors and they have a bad reputation and i'm not really sure why um 
but they do and and that's what it is so mine worked fine all of mine have ever worked fine it's all i've really ever used and i would use them again so there's that it's kind of why i encourage people to even if you're not going to remain simple start out simple start out with that over there don't worry about this do that get that in your shit and running then worry about this because when you add up you know, oh, we're going to have a oh, $1,500 holly. They're like $2,000 now. Um, and I got to have this $1,000 set of injectors. And now I got to have this $800 fuel pump and five fuel pumps. And then your shit winds up sitting here on stands like mine has for the past year. Um, and you, you don't want that. I don't want that for you. And then you get tired of it and then you sell it for next to nothing. Um, so just get it started. Don't don't get it right. Just get it running. If it spins, it wins. Uh, don't don't shoot for the stars and land on the moon. Shoot for the moon and land on the moon. So that pretty much covers LS fuel systems, and that's pretty much all I intend to cover today in this video. So I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, drop them down below. You want to see any more on the LS basics before like I mess with this? Like I said, I'll, I'll keep doing it as we go. And uh, I'll show you guys along the way, of course. So that's the whole point of this, kind of. I right, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer.